Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a review of this superb box, Marin Alsop's Complete Leonard Bernstein Recordings on Naxos, or at least complete so far. Now, one of the things I've always said about a great composer who was living and is no longer with us, who was also a great conductor, um, is that, I mean, most conductors were composers, but they were terrible composers. Bernstein was great at everything. He really was. He was just a genius. Some people resist that concept, but um, I don't care. <laughs> it's just not true, and they're wrong. He was astonishingly gifted in virtually every area that he attempted, no, not least as a composer. Now, he's controversial as a composer because, you know, his style was extremely eclectic, and and it hovered between the more, you know, pop and serious elements. And because he wanted to be taken seriously as a composer, and he tried sometimes way too hard to be serious as a composer, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that he didn't write wonderful music. He really, really did. And this set is important because when the composer is no longer with us, who was a great conductor, the viability of his music depends on other people performing it. And not only that, other people performing it as well as he did. And that's a trap. It's a trap because it's all too easy for people who dislike him or who dislike his music to say, oh, well, it was good when he performed it, but nobody else can perform it as well. And that's just an easy way to try and diss him as a composer. And it's a very lazy way because Bernstein's music has worked extremely well in the hands of other sympathetic interpreters. And most of them have been sympathetic. They were very sympathetic when he was alive. And they are equally so now that he's no longer with us. And one of the most sympathetic is Marin Alsop, who, of course, worked with him and so has the pedigree. But it wouldn't have made any difference because a piece of music is a piece of music. You just look at it, and if you like it, you play it. And if you really like it, you play it really well. And if you play it really well, that speaks for itself. You don't have to have, you know... You know, the old, you know, you know, when Beethoven gave the, the touch of something to Liszt. Remember that? There's that story about how when Liszt was like nine or something, he met Beethoven and Beethoven patted him on the head or, you know, touched him on the cheek or tickled him under his chin or <laughs> did something to confer the, the pedigree of, of beethoven aliciousness on Liszt. And Bernstein supposedly conveyed the, the patina of Bernsteinosity on Marin Alsop. I mean, you know, who cares about that stuff? It's all, it's good PR, I suppose, right? So let's see what's in here. And we'll, we'll just take it from there because it's all really splendid. I've already done a talk on her Bernstein's mass. And if you are an insider subscriber, I'm a ClassicsToday.com insider subscriber, that is, and I'm sure you'd like to be if you're not. Um, I reviewed this box separately there with a nice juicy sound clip from the Cottage Symphony, which you can go and listen to. So, uh, you know, you have that option as well. So, first we get Symphonies 1 and 2, superbly done. These are with the Baltimore Symphony. Some of these are with Baltimore. Some of these, I think, are with Bournemouth. And some of them are with uh, something else. Well, we'll get there when we get there. So, Symphonies 1 and 2, first rate. Naxos actually has two first rate recordings of Bernstein's first symphony. There's also one, um, I think it's James Judd in the New Zealand Symphony, which is absolutely fantastic as well. So, yeah. Symphonies one and two. Oh, the pianist in number in number in number two is Jean Yves Thibaudet, who is no slouch when it comes to this music. He's done a lot of, you know, jazz inflected classical music, and he's quite adept in that style. Then we get the Kaddish Symphony, and this is sort of the the um, original version of the Kaddish Symphony with the extra narration. I. I like the original version as well. I, I think it's actually better. I mean, I think if you're going to go for the narration, and I detest narration with music. Oh, God, I hate it. Um, you might as well go whole hog and do it all. Why not? The problem with the Cottage Symphony, as I see it, 
Um, even Bernstein thought it was too talky when he revised it. It's just that the music's wonderful, but the whole framework about, you know, screaming at God and, you know, it's just, it's, it's a little embarrassing, frankly. But, hey, it is what it is, and I really do like the music. The music is quite beautiful. You also get Bernstein's Missa Brevis. I mean, it's interesting, you know, for such a Jewish guy, he wrote two mass settings which is rather interesting, isn't it? Because he was, of course, participating in that great Western tradition of setting immortal words to music. So, you know, thereby theoretically preserving the immortality of the music, you know, joining the music to a timeless text. It's an interesting phenomenon. And then we have uh, The Lark, which is another version with narrator. And like, it's like, okay, fine, that's nice. <laughs> Narrators, Ugh narrators. I, I just can't deal with it. Okay. Serenade. The Serenade is an absolute masterpiece. One of the great 20th century violin concertos. And this is with Philippe Quint, violin, who is superb. This is with the Bournemouth Symphony, this one. And then you get facsimile and the divertimento, which is adorable. You know, it's got that turkey trot. Dum, bum, ba, da, 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 da. Dum, bum, bum, ba, ba, da, da. Oh, it's just so cute. All right, then we already talked about this absolutely fantastic recording of Mass, which is probably the reference version now, frankly. It's better than Bernstein's with Jubilant Sykes, who is the best celebrant you've ever heard in your life with the Baltimore Symphony. It's amazing. And then the Chichester Psalms, wonderful choral work. And On the Waterfront, the Symphonic Suite, which is tons of fun. And the three dance episodes from On the Town. This is, you know, sort of the, the cousin of the symphonic dances from West Side Story, which are not in this set, by the way. Um, and I, I just love the dances from On the Town. I really do. It's only 10 minutes long. That's why people don't, you know, play it as frequently as the symphonic dances from West Side Story. But my God, this music is fun. And I actually, you know, was in a production of On the Town when, when I was in high school. And boy, that's just a great musical. Oh, it's so much fun. Okay, then we have um, a, a bunch of short little things that are rather interesting. You get, this is perhaps the most interesting disc um, uh, in the entire set in some ways, uh, because it has some unusual music that you don't know, like totally, completely and utterly by heart. You have the Mambo from West Side Story with the concert ending. So it's, that's in the symphonic dances. So you get a piece of that. It's only two minutes and 21 seconds long. And then you get Slava, the overture he wrote for Rostropovich. And the suite, the suite for orchestra from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, arranged by Charlie Harmon. This is very, very nice and worth having. It's almost like the symphonic dances from West Side Story. It's over 16 minutes long. It's a substantial work. 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue was Bernstein's last musical. It was a disaster. It flopped miserably. But it had some really good music in it. And so uh, this is a wonderful way to salvage it, I think. I mean, there's also a, a, a 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue cantata taken from that. I mean, it's been arranged every rich way, which way to try and salvage the best of the music. But it's really a nice piece. So this is fun and really worth having. It's, well, it's actually longer than that. It's almost 18 minutes. It's really a, sort of a, a major chunk of Bernsteiniana. And if you like Bernstein, then you want all the Bernsteiniana, you can get your hand uh, on a, yeah. And then we have CBS music, which is rather interesting, um, sort of incidental music thing here. And the Times Square Ballet from On the Town, which is what, one minute and 10 seconds? Well, that's a little odd because it's sort of in the, it's in the dances from On the Town, but that's all right. And then you get a Bernstein birthday request, which is eight variations on New York, New York um, from On the Town by Berio, Corigliano, Druckmann, Foss, Kirchner, Schumann, Takamitsu, and Williams. Isn't that interesting? You know, that's a sort of gloss on Bernstein himself by a very, very interesting group of composers. And so um, I like this disc. This is fun stuff. And if you're a, a Bernstein person, you're going to want to hear it because there are things there that you're not going to find anywhere else so easily. Then we get 
the last disc. This is with the Sao Paulo Symphony. And it also contains some world premiere recordings, the Overture to Candide, Fancy Free, and an orchestration of the anniversaries. You know, Bernstein wrote piano pieces called anniversaries for birthdays and other events. And here is an arrangement of them for orchestra by, by Garth Edwin Sutherland from 2016. Another good 15 minutes of Bernsteiniana which is marvelous to have. And finally, the Overture to Wonderful Town, which you don't find very often. Wonderful Town is also a delightful musical. Bernstein's musicals are fabulous. All of them. And there are four, well, five, if you include 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. It's the medium in which he did the most work in his life. And of course, people don't want to mention that because musicals are lighter music and it's not serious. And even he thought so, which was a shame. I mean, he thought so to a degree. I mean, the, the evidence is out there because he wrote so many works in other media. But, you know, Gilbert and Sullivan, you know, Sullivan was the greatest English composer of the 19th century. And he wrote light music, too. And his serious stuff, no one pays attention to. Bernstein's serious stuff is worth paying attention to, for sure. But the light stuff is absolutely masterful. And great music is great music. It doesn't matter what kind it is. So this is great to have. And then finally you get a, a film, Bernstein, Larger Than Life, <laughs> which I actually watched. Usually I ignore these things because I hate this hagiographic stuff. <laughs> you know, it's just a waste of time. You could be listening to music <laughs> instead of watching this garbage. But it happens to be a pretty good film. It's actually a good film. It's sensitively done and it's not too tacky and it doesn't make you crazy. So, I mean, I, I give it that. So there you go. That is the Marin Alsop Bernstein Nexus thing. Now you'll notice that there are a couple things missing. As I said, you don't get the symphonic dances from West Side Story. You don't get the Dybbuk, the ballet, which has some absolutely splendid music in it, either the suites or the complete ballet. I prefer the complete ballet. You might as well have it all. Um, but it's it's still probably, um, you know, well, it's the best Bernstein outside of Bernstein, and it's better than some Bernstein. And that's saying a lot. So, I, you know, one of you, you mentioned, asked me if I had reviewed this set, and I did on ClassicsToday.com, but I hadn't done a video, and I felt terribly guilty because, you know, it deserves a video. Clearly, it's wonderful. So here's the video. <laughs> Thank you for giving me the enthusiasm or the support or the, the, the inspiration to make the video. So keep on listening, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.